Hello, my name is Anno Carroll from UMETSAT and I'm here with an animation of sea surface temperature from 2016 as seen from a combination of satellite data and ocean surface measurements. The satellite data used comes from both the geostationary ring of satellites and polar orbiting data including from Europe, America and Japan. We can see the colder temperatures in blue at the poles, graduating to the warmer sea surface temperatures in the tropics and equatorial regions. As we observe the sea surface temperatures for each day during the year, we can see the beautiful structure and movement of the ocean as the currents transport heat and energy around the Earth. At the start of 2016, the El Niño Southern Oscillation conditions in the tropical Pacific were in an El Niño phase, where in the El Niño 3.4 region, the sea surface temperatures were observed to be more than half a degree above average conditions. El Niño conditions are noted by the warm sea surface temperatures in the central and east central equatorial Pacific, including off the coast of Peru. This affects local and global weather patterns and influences aspects such as global droughts, flooding and therefore the production of food. For example, the cold upwelling usually seen off Peru, bringing nutrient-rich waters for fishing, is halted during El Niño conditions. In March, we can clearly see the intricate detail of the graceful western boundary currents. These are warm, narrow and fast-flowing currents that occur on the west side of the ocean basins, carrying warm water from the tropics towards the poles. For example, the tapering, winding, deep, warm waters of the Gulf Stream off the east coast of the US bring warm water from the tropical Atlantic towards northern Europe, keeping us warm and contributing to a milder climate. In general, these currents are seen on the western part of the large ocean gyres that circle the main ocean basins, where western intensification occurs due to stresses caused by the differences between the tropical and mid-latitude wind patterns. The Kurushio current near Japan is another western boundary current, and in April we can see the elegant narrow band of warm saline water swirling and travelling northeast past the south coast of Japan. It is significant for its warming effect on local islands. The Kurushio turns east eventually, turning into the North Pacific Current. At this point, El Nino conditions are remaining in the tropical Pacific, but there is a downwards trend in sea surface temperatures towards neutral conditions, so the strength of the El Niño is reducing. Whispers of cooler temperatures in the central Pacific are seen moving westwards in waves, indicating the gradually changing conditions. During the course of May, we can see the Humboldt current beginning to gather strength once more, indicative of the reducing El Niño conditions. The Humboldt current is a cold current with low salinity moving north along the Chilean and Peruvian coastline in South America. It is a large upwelling system providing an abundance of marine life, the return of which is well needed by the region after the reduction in marine productivity caused by El Niño conditions. Moving to the other side of South America, we can see the Malvinas or Falkland western boundary current twisting and turning its way north as a narrow extent of cold ocean reaching all the way to Uruguay. The clash of cold and warm water is not seen more fiercely than in the Southern Ocean, where the Antarctic circumpolar current encircles the whole globe flowing eastwards. It is an extremely deep and wide current, transporting huge volumes of water, but is not flowing especially fast. It is driven by the strong westerly winds in this region. In June, neutral El Niño southern oscillation conditions are reached and these neutral conditions continue in July and August. A strip of cold water along the equator from the deep cold ocean upwelling from the Humboldt system near Peru then spreads westwards. These are called tropical instability waves. They move westwards over a few weeks and are caused by the interfaces between the cold water tongue and the warmer water in the tropical Pacific to the north and south of them. The mixing of cold and warm water influences the local winds, surface pressure and meteorological conditions. Moving over to Europe for the Northern Hemisphere summer, we can see significant warming of the Mediterranean Sea during July and August, 
perfectly in time for European summer holidays. Large diurnal variations in sea surface temperature are known to exist in this region during this period, where the surface warms up during the day, especially where there is a large amount of insulation and low wind speeds. The sea surface temperatures of the Mediterranean begin to cool down later in September and October. During September, we can see the cold upwelling off the coast of Namibia, bringing nutrient-rich waters to the region. This is an eastern boundary current, similar to the Humboldt current off the coast of Peru. Also during September, the wide-scale warm ocean temperatures of the Pacific Warm Pool region in the western tropical Pacific are obvious. La Niña conditions are seen from October onwards, where in the Nino 3.4 region, sea surface temperatures are more than half a degree cooler than average. Off the coast of Peru, the cold upwelling strengthens with the increasing La Niña, and thus the cooler water can be seen moving westwards along the equator. The record low sea ice extent of late 2016 is contributing to warmer sea surface temperature anomalies, especially around October and November. Looking at the regions of the Kara Sea, Barents Sea and Bering Strait, we can see sea surface temperatures shown at a time of year where there would have been sea ice present in past years. The implications for the changing climate in the Arctic are enormous, so it is important to keep monitoring the surface temperature changes in this region with the use of satellite data. There is also an impact on potential shipping routes, affecting the lives of the local populations, and this also impacts the food chain.